Hey, this is John from Alloy211. Today's video is on the Winchester 1897 slide action shotgun. In particular, this 1897 Winchester slide action shotgun. Commonly referred to today as a pump action shotgun, as you can either pump or slide the forend in order to work the action. The 1897 was in production from 1897 until 1957, at which point they've made just over a million of them in a variety of configurations, from hunting to police to military. Probably the most commonly known usage of this firearm, the Winchester 1897, for most people is as the trench gun in World War I that American troops used. They actually used a variety of shotguns, but most people would associate this particular shotgun with that. Although this shotgun itself is not a trench gun, it is a brush takedown model. And I'll kind of get into that here in a bit. The mechanics of it are the same other than the fact that it's a takedown. And also, uh, there's some other slight differences that I'll kind of touch on. The 1897 was a development of the 1893 slide action, a John Browning design. Uh, some of the improvements made to the 1897 over the 1893, they strengthened and lengthened the receiver in order to handle two and three quarter smokeless shells. They also added a top to the receiver to help with ejection and also to strengthen the receiver. They added a movable cartridge guide to help prevent rounds from falling out. They lengthened the stock and dropped the comb on it. And they also improved the lock to help prevent misfires and, keeping, and to help keep the bolt closed until it had been fired. Another improvement that they made was that you had to pump the pump forward in order to unlock the action. Now with the hammer down, you just push the pump forward and pull it back and you can action it. Now, with the hammer cocked, if you want to do that, you have to push this button right here on the side of the receiver. Hopefully you can see that button. There you can see it a little better there. You have to push that button and pull forward on the forearm and then push back. Now, if the hammer is dropped, you just have to push forward and pull back. And you know, I'm not going to complain about this gun too much. It's a really cool design, especially for the time. But the one thing I did notice is if you have your hand up here and you go to uh, open the action, you're hitting the your hand. And that, I mean, it's not that bad, but that's still probably not the best. And I guess it's one of the inherent problems of whenever you have the bolt come out of the back of the firearm. It's a really interesting design. Um, it doesn't lock like a typical modern pump shotgun would lock. In fact, the carrier, go ahead and action this again. The carrier comes out of the bottom there, as you can see it, is actioned with the action bars, I guess that action bar. It has a single bar opposed to like an 870, which has dual bars, this has a single bar. It's what some people would call a weakness of the design, and I kind of have to agree with that. Anyway, the action bar works in this groove. And as you pull it forward, as you can see here, it brings the carrier up, up, and try to get this. There we go. Up and into the back of the bolt face. And that is what locks into place when it fires. It's a neat design. I, I think it's a neat design. Anyway, let's go ahead and do the takedown portion of this. In order to take this down, you have a cross pin at the front of the magazine. Right here, it's captive. So you just push that, and then you turn the magazine tube like that. Let's go ahead and get back here. Then you pull it forward. When you pull it forward, you can see you have this interrupted thread that goes into the receiver. So you pull that forward, pull the pump forward, and then after you do that, you can rotate the whole barrel and magazine assembly to the left and remove it from the receiver. It also uses another, let me get the light up there so you can actually see that, it uses another interrupter thread right there. And I think that's a really neat design, it's a really neat way to do it. I wouldn't say it's the first gun to use interrupter threads like that to do a takedown, but it is really elegant in its function. So I do like that. If you look here, 
can see where the action bar goes into the receiver. See where the magazine tube goes into the receiver. And well, there you go, you can see the firing pin as well. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together really quickly. That is one nice thing about a takedown firearm is that you can take it apart and put it back together pretty quickly. Now, go ahead and get this into place, which this is not as easy to do on camera as it is when it's much easier to do this honestly when you have the gun like this. We're not trying to hold it horizontally and show you it on the camera. Just kind of show you what I did again there because you may not be able to see it really well. Here it is unlocked. You can go ahead and slide the magazine tube in. Then you rotate the tube around, push the pin back through, and now it is good to go again. This particular 1897 was made in around 1905 to 1906, at least indicated by the serial number. The brush takedown model, I think I said bush takedown model earlier maybe. Regardless, it's the brush takedown model. Uh, was available in 16 gauge and 12 gauge, this is a 12 gauge, with a 26 inch barrel. It had a shorter magazine tube and it had plain walnut stocks without any checkering. They made the brush takedown model from 1897 until 1931. And this was a really important shotgun design and it carried on for a long period of time. And to me, honestly, looking at this shotgun in particular, and thinking about this as 112 years old, I find that to be really impressive that it looks this nice. It's in really pretty good shape. I mean, it's obviously been used, but not abused. And yeah, some people really like this shotgun, um, and it's known for the fact that you can just hold the trigger and work the action, and the hammer will drop as such. And although that is, I don't want to say it's safe to do, you really shouldn't do that because there's a chance that it could fire out of battery. And if it fires out of battery, it could really be a danger to you and other people. So it's cool as the uh, holding the trigger and just racking it and firing it as fast as you can is, it's really not the safest thing to do and I honestly wouldn't recommend it. And really if you get fast enough with a pump shotgun, that's not that big of a factor. It's not going to really save you that much time. And now that I've kind of babbled on about it, a little boring safety lesson, there's something else that's really cool about this shotgun, but it really doesn't have anything to do with this shotgun. The gentleman that let me borrow this for this video, after I borrowed it, informed me that he had a cleaning kit that was either purchased at the time of the shotgun or it came with the shotgun, uh, kind of doubting that it actually came with the shotgun, but it definitely was a period correct cleaning kit when he brought it to me. And I actually found it, in many ways, more interesting. Let's go ahead and kind of move the shotgun there. Bring these here. I'm going to go ahead and drop. Drop my camera down. It's a little easier to do these small things with the camera lower down. Anyway, I really, I mean, I thought these cleaning rods were neat and they looked neat and they looked really well made for a cleaning rod. I mean, when I think about our modern aluminum cleaning rods or whatever kind of cleaning rod you have, it, they just don't have that sort of, I don't know, craftsmanship look to them. I guess in some, I mean, the wood on here is not that great, but it's pretty decent when you think it's just a cleaning rod, and especially when you compare it to, say, uh, one of our modern aluminum cleaning rods like this. That, that is pretty junk. <laughs> anyway, what was really interesting about this, um, at least I found really interesting, let me grab this other one here, is when I looked up this name right here. Let's see if I can get on camera better. There we go. BGI Company, which that stands for Bridgeport Gun and Implement Company, which was a company out of Bridgeport, Connecticut, which I guess that in and of itself is not interesting. There are some other interesting aspects of this company. They not only made cleaning kits for shotguns, they made shotgun shell reloading kits, they made golf clubs, they made golf balls, they made police whistles, they made uh, bicycle accessories, 
I think their most well known was the cyclometer, which was a, a little thing that would count the miles and for every mile it would ding. So this company, uh, Bridgeport, uh, Bridgeport Gun and Implement, made a variety of products in, you know, kind of different fields, although mostly firearms. And that was interesting. But what I found really interesting was the guy who formed the company, and his name is Marcellus Hartley. Now, you probably haven't heard of that name. Maybe some of you have. Um, and it's really a shame that more people haven't. And it kind of gets back to something that I've thought about before myself, which is, you know, you have literally millions of people who have come and gone before us and we don't remember these people and here's a guy who when I looked into it was actually maybe really important in some ways and if nothing else was really interesting but the vast majority of people never heard of him anyway back to Marcellus Hartley for a second I guess can I guess kind of give a quick overview if you want to look him up go ahead and look him up because he's an interesting guy he was born 1827 lived until 1902 uh, prior to the Civil War, he was uh, kind of a firearms merchant in that field of work. During the Civil War, he ended up becoming the confidential arms procurement uh, agent for the Union. After a couple of kind of bumbling people did not do a very good job of that, he went over to Europe and he actually managed to get quite a few firearms for the Union. So he helped out in the Union's effort in the Civil War. After the Civil War, he went on to form a few companies and was involved with uh, involved with the United Union Metallic Cartridge Company was involved with the well involved with the buyout of Remington after they went bankrupt with Winchester and then he and his partners bought their share out was involved with the Bridgeport Gun and Implement Company which made a whole range of products that were obviously used. I mean, like when you think about this, you think about like Hops 9, Hop 9, today making all these products. Well, this was a company that did that and many other things as well. But I really found it, oh, oh, that was the other part. He also was involved in early electrical, an early electrical company, and in that company, he's involved with Hiram Maxim of the Maxim machine gun fame. And I thought that was really interesting because although he's this guy that's big into firearms and firearm accessories, when he works with Hiram Maxim, the father of the modern machine gun or the recoil operated machine gun, not working on guns, working on electric dynamos. So, although yeah, I, I do find this shotgun really interesting. It's a fascinating shotgun and it's cool. And it's cool to see a piece of firearms history that is this old and in such good condition. But then when I looked at this cleaning rod, and I looked that up, and I saw the man behind this company, it made me think, you know, that's really interesting. The story behind this guy is really an interesting story that most people don't even, won't even know. Another product that his company is known for, uh, well not his company necessarily, but the Bridgeport company, which was his company, but was something called the Bridgeport Rig, which if you've ever watched different say western movies or looked at some different books from guns of the old west a lot of times you'll see this screwed on metal tab that goes on the side of a single action pistol and what that was for was so that you could put it onto your belt and instead of having to draw it out of the holster you could just swivel it and fire from the hip um, and although they didn't actually invent that as invented by another guy they did produce it and I thought that was interesting too because I have seen this thing in books and illustrated in books and in movies and I had no idea that again is associated with someone who has this really interesting and colorful history well not necessarily colorful but interesting and was maybe important states like to the Union War effort and we wouldn't ever really know it. Anyway I'll leave you with one last little bit on Marcellus Hartley which was apparently after John Browning had tried to pitch the auto his automatic shotgun to Winchester and they rejected him they went to Hartley to pitch it to him and they were informed that Hartley had died and that he would not be able to attend their meeting and I thought that was kind of an interesting and fortuitous thing in some ways because of Hartley's earlier involvement with Winchester Winchester's rejection of Browning and then them going to him and then him subsequently dying before he got the chance to, to make it Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned some things about the 1897 shotgun. And more importantly, maybe not more importantly, but also interestingly enough about 
the, use the one that you can actually see the letters, the Bridgeport Gun and Implement Company, and Marcellus Hartley. Oh, and just to show these off again for one quick moment. And you look at that, and that is that is pretty nice. I think that is, I mean, especially when you look at the brass end on this. I mean, granted, that's a rough casting, but when you compare it to the cleaning tools and the manufacturer of the cleaning tools we have today compared to this, this this is much nicer quality in my opinion. I mean, although that's another thing too. I mean, look at all that dirt in there. And granted, this was a just civilian-owned firearm, so. Probably the only history associated with this is either hunting or shooting clays, but that just gives you an idea of how much this was used over those years, of how much dirt is caked into it. Anyway, sorry. Like I was saying, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you check out some of my other videos and you enjoy those too, I'd really appreciate if you subscribed. Um, I, like, I make these videos because I enjoy making them and I hope that people will learn something from them. And also, I can learn something from them because a lot of times people add something in the comments that I didn't know or something I missed in my research. So, there's another. If you know something else about this that I don't, go ahead and add to it. Thanks. Hope you had a good day and hope you enjoyed the video.